constantly being hyper focused on self awareness will keep you in a place where you're indispensable. There's nothing an employer or a business owner loves more than a self aware employee. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Jack Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ow! My howl just cracked a little bit. I think I'm a adolescent wolf today. I apologize for that. This is episode 160 of the Sales Wolves podcast, and we're going to title this episode Becoming Indispensable. Every time I say that, I think of that Joe Dispenza book, Becoming Supernatural. But we're not talking about that today. Not supernatural, but indispensable. Maybe those are one and the same. Maybe those are the exact same thing. But becoming indispensable, you know, over the last few years, it hasn't been as important because, quite frankly, we've been in an incredible economy for 10 plus years. But as history would show, it's not always going to be that way. And at some point here in the future, there is going to come a time where employers are going to have to make difficult decisions. So because of that, it has never been more important to make yourself indispensable to your employee, your, to your employer, and also to your organization as a whole, to your coworkers, to the people that you surround yourself with. You want to become someone that people can't live without, that people can't do life without. I want to start with a quote from Robert Baden Powell. He said, if you make yourself indispensable to your employer, he is not going to part with you in a hurry, no matter what it costs him. So think about that. Think about an employer, and and maybe you are an employer, maybe you are a business owner and you have employees. Think about how you would have to feel about an employee. Think about how you would have to feel about a business partner. Think about how you would have to feel about someone within your organization to be able to say, no matter the cost, I'm not willing to lose that person. So how do we become that person? Well, I found an article by John Boytnot And I love his approach because it didn't just say how to make yourself indispensable. He gave seven ways to make yourself indispensable without being overworked. And I think that's an important caveat because of the fact that most of the time when we think about becoming indispensable, we think about doing more, 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 more than everybody else, more than you've ever done before. And that's how you become indispensable because you're absolutely outworking everybody. And certainly you can still outwork everybody without being overworked. I will repeat that. You can certainly outwork everybody without being overworked. But here's seven ways that John Boytnot uh, itemized out here for us to become indispensable. The first is to apply for the position you want, which is very interesting. He didn't say apply for the position that you need, apply for the position Uh, that's the right fit, apply for the position that you can excel at. He said, apply for the position you want. And I think so oftentimes when people are looking for a new career and they're applying for career opportunities, they apply for something that they know they can do well. But when you're applying for a position that you want, that means it's something that you're going to enjoy. That means it's something that you're going to be passionate about. And the key to becoming indispensable is being passionate about what you're doing. Because unless you're passionate and excited about what you're doing, the hard work that goes into becoming indispensable is nearly impossible. Point number two, bring enthusiasm to work, which goes right with number one. If you're passionate, if you're excited about what you're doing, you are going to bring enthusiasm. But if you think about it, have you ever been in a meeting where there's that one person that's just completely unenthusiastic, just appears as though there's anywhere else in the world they would rather be than in that meeting. Do not let that be you. Be the one that's extremely enthusiastic, that's throwing out ideas, that's engaging in the conversation. Point three, don't make it all about getting credit. No one likes the person that comes up with an idea but then has to claim the credit. It's all about the betterment of the organization, the betterment of the process, the betterment of the company. And whether you get credit for that or not, at the end of the day, when an employer is looking at their employees, 
they're going to know where those ideas came from. They're going to know where those initiatives started from. Number four, empower others, which really ties into number three with not having to get credit for everything, empowering others to become the best version of themselves. The whole quote, a high tide raises all ships. You want to be that person that helps the other people in your organization get better. And the way you do that is by yourself getting better. The only way you can enable other people to become the best versions of themselves is for you to become the best version of yourself. And yes, that takes work. Number five, always be educating yourself. There's nothing an employer loves more than an employee or a business partner or someone within their organization that is constantly learning. And not just learning the things that were told to learn, not just reading the books that they were recommended to read, someone that's going the extra mile, someone that's using time outside of work, outside of the quote unquote office hours to get better at their craft or to just get better at the skills that go along with what they're doing in work, but really translate to all areas of your life, those interpersonal skills, those relational skills. Number six, maintain self-awareness. Self-awareness has become kind of a, a hot topic, a buzzword over the last three or four years, especially on social media, but it doesn't make it any less important. Self-awareness is one of the most critical keys to your success. But what does that really mean? Being self-aware means that you not only know, you're not only aware of the things going on around you, you're aware of how you affect the things that are going around you. You're aware of how you affect those that you're in contact with on a daily basis. And so it's not so much saying, okay, I'm aware that I'm in this situation and this is what I need to do. It's being aware of how others are perceiving you. Being aware when you say something a certain way, how it makes somebody else feel. Constantly being hyper-focused on self-awareness will keep you in a place where you're indispensable. There's nothing an employer or a business owner loves more than a self-aware employee. Number seven, and lastly, create goals and track progress. To become indispensable, you are going to have to do things that other people just aren't willing to do. But the only way that you're gonna be able to do that is by putting those down on paper, by having goals set in place and then tracking your progress so that you know where you're at towards that goal. If I'm sitting down with an employer, and let's just say tomorrow, the economy crashes, we're in an environment where the reality is employers are gonna have to make some tough decisions. If you're sitting down with an employer and they're talking to you about your future and, and about your part in this company, if you're able to, to itemize out, here's the things that I'm working on, here's the goals that I have in place, not only that, but here's where I'm at towards those goals. That is someone that you cannot afford to lose. That is someone that is irreplaceable in the mind of the employer. Lastly, I want to, I want to uh, read a quote from Mike Rowe. Uh, I think we all know who Mike Rowe is, but this is an incredible quote from him. He says, stop looking for the right career and start looking for a job, any job. Forget about what you like. Focus on what's available. Get yourself hired show up early, stay late, volunteer for the work, become indispensable. You can always quit later and be no worse off than you are today. The thing I like about this quote and really where I want to take this quote is this, the perfect opportunity will never come when you're failing or not going all in on your current opportunity. So when it comes to being indispensable, you want to be all in where you're at. And just because you may be indispensable doesn't mean that things aren't going to happen. Doesn't mean that you may not lose that job, that you may not be replaced. But if you are absolutely going all in in your current opportunity, if something like that happens, if you're replaced, if you're fired, if you're let go, the right opportunity is just around the corner because when you're going all in and when you are fully present and when you're giving everything you've got in the career that you have right now, people are taking notice. People from other organizations, people from other companies, people on social media are taking notice of the things that you're doing that others simply aren't willing to do. And so when one opportunity is lost, the next one is right around the corner. 
Guys, becoming indispensable is so, so, so important. And I think if you just keep this in the back of your mind throughout your days, throughout your weeks, throughout your months, if, if is what I'm doing today, is was the effort that I put in today indispensable? Was the work that I put in today indispensable? And what's the opposite of that? Was the work that I put in today, was the effort that I put in today, could somebody else just fill right in and do that? Could somebody else just step in and accomplish the things that I got done today? You want that answer to be absolutely not. Again, this comes down to an employer having to make a tough decision and being able to look at you and say, man, I, I can't afford to lose them. Even if the cost of keeping you is high, I cannot afford to lose you. That is the best place you can possibly be in your career. So with that, guys, this is episode 160 of the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Jack Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ow!